science specialists from the Bay Area to help us accelerate the scaling of promised land. We are also very lucky to have an impressive group of advisors. For example, Christian Zahn is a hedge fund investor specializing in fossil fuels and emerging carbon markets. Professor Sherrick is an incredibly knowledgeable farm economist from the University of Illinois with a diverse and deep industry connections. One of the most enjoyable aspects of my role as a farmland capital allocator is the opportunity to visit with the people and the communities we're investing in. I've been inspired by their handiwork and authenticity. For example, I marveled at the seal. There we go. I marveled at the seal for Pamlico County, North Carolina, with the farmer with the spade. I think it speaks volume about the character of this farming community. My favorite poet, John O'Donohue, captured the essence of the uncommon calling and lifestyle of the far farming communities that we invest in. I'm looking forward to hearing more about former NFL player Jason Brown's call to become a farmer this afternoon. Here's another county seal and quote from O'Donohue. The seal is from Marion County, South Carolina, formed in 1798. The four pillars of the community highlighted on the seal are culture, history, industry, and agriculture. After a dozen or more visits to various farms this past year, I look forward to spending time in the country to see what the country is actually like. Much like the farmers in rural communities generally, we believe that farmland is an underappreciated asset class. We also believe that the rural OZ communities we invest in are very underappreciated. It's still early days, yet I foresee a, a lot more optionality in OZ farmland investing than I originally anticipated. I think this is best illustrated by the natural cop capital concept whereby so so society begins placing higher economic value on environmental, social, and governance principles. Some of the speakers this morning talked about this direction. One example is emerging carbon farming markets. I believe there are at least four carbon-focused businesses at this year's Expo. I'll let these experts tell you how best to value these farmland options. All right, now this slide summarizes the return and risk performance of farmland over the last 50 years as compared to various liquid marketable securities. The Promised Land OZ Fund proxy was developed by Ailey using data available from the TIAA Center for Farmland Research at the University of Illinois. It is a state level weighted average historical return of Illinois, North and South Carolina, and Mississippi farmland represented in our current 10 farm portfolio. Farmland has clearly shown the highest risk adjusted returns over this 50 year period with something like a 60% higher return compared to the S&P 500 at about half the risk. Folks, I believe Professor Sharp and Markowitz would call this a free lunch down on the farm. I suspect many of you in this room know that farmland values are positively correlated with inflation. And except for the early 80s, farmland prices appreciated at a positive spread to CPI. For example, in 1977, 
CPI rose 6.5% that year, while farmland returned 25.3%. The latest government figures from November 21 for CPI were an annualized 6.8 increase. Hedge fund investor Bill Ackman believes the government uses extremely imprecise metrics that underestimate housing cost inflation, something called owner equivalent rents. He believes the correct November CPI figure would be a whopping 10.1% increase. So in summary, the macro environment for investing in farmland today is excellent with a winning combination of compelling historical risk-adjusted returns together with increasingly valuable inflation protection attributes. Now let's talk about putting a little icing on the farmland investment cake by wrapping it in the OZ tax benefit structure. Opportunity Zone investors receive three primary benefits by investing eligible capital gains proceeds into a Qualified Opportunity Zone Fund, or QOF, within 180 days of recognition. Capital gains can be either short or long term. The first benefit is that the tax on the capital gain that would otherwise be due is deferred until the end of 2026. The second and largest tax benefit is the exclusion of capital gains tax on any appreciation of farmland within a QOF when the investment is held for 10 years. That's right, if you hold a farmland OZ investment for 10 years, you will not pay capital gains tax on its appreciation. Sure. Uh, you could sell uh, marketable equity securities. You could sell real estate. Um, it's pretty broad. Uh, the last tax benefit is accelerated depreciation of new and used farmland improvements where the IRS depreciable lives are 15 years or less. There's no recapture of depreciation within a QOF if the 10-year hold requirement is met. In other words, your tax-exempt capital gain within the OZ is larger than it would be outside the OZ structure where depreciation recapture generally applies. All right, here's some uh, fast facts on the Opportunity Zone program. There are over 8,700 Opportunity Zones across the U.S. with 35 million residents and 1.6 million businesses. The zones are broadly distributed throughout urban and rural American communities. As you might expect, you can count on one hand the number of QOFs focused on rural American communities. According to the Economic Innovation Group, there are only five of the hundreds of QOFs that are focused on rural America. Promised Land in Aurora, Illinois is the blue flagged fund with the green dollar sign. The other two ag, there's three ag funds out of the five. The other two ag funds are focused on new farming technologies like controlled environment ag or animal protein. We love the vast white space of the traditional cropland market with a value of 2.7 trillion, of which an estimated 20% is in OZs. To make this a little more local for some of you, here is the OZ map for the state of Iowa. There are 62 OZs in the state with 206,000 residents and 231,000 jobs. 
Approximately 58% of the OZs are in rural communities. All right, let's now take a look uh, at the current portfolio for Promised Land OZ Fund 1. Got your eye on something? <laughs> Great, thanks, Ailey. Uh, so we recently took in six and a half million in equity at year end. So we have something like twelve million in dry powder uh, from uh, Farmer Mac debt financing. Today, we own uh, 10 farms, 8,000 acres across four states, representing uh, 54 million of farmland value and the necessary OZ capital improvements. Nine of the farms are row crop, corn, soy, and wheat. Uh, the 10th farm is a specialty sod farm in South Carolina. Uh, the following presents our base case unlevered return for the current 10 farm portfolio against Green Street advisors' estimates for other real estate assets. The base case return of 7.3% is comprised of a 3.7% gross yield on rental income and a 4.4% average annual land appreciation assumption. And that land appreciation assumption is basically taking 2.4% 10-year treasury break even as the spread over the Fed's CPI target of 2%. As uh, quite a few folks have said this morning, the Fed is currently overshooting its CPI target by a factor of three to five times. We see uh, upside potential from our base case returns as it does not include return potential from farmland options such as carbon farming and other natural capital attributes, nor continued high single digit inflation. All right, this is the quite a busy slide, uh, but it's uh, very, very important it demonstrate that the OZ structure is a very clever way to hold an investment in farmland. What we've done here is calculate the various components of the OZ tax benefit on our current 34 million in equity capital. Starting at the top and on the right, we have the benefit from a 10% step up on a five-year hold by 2026. And that's no longer available. Next, you have the five-year deferral benefit on de delaying your capital gains taxes until 2026. And last, we have the sizable $15 million tax benefit from tax-free capital gain treatment on a 10-year hold. These OZ tax benefits total 20 million on the 34 million of equity versus a regular way investment in farmland. This chart presents the same data in an annualized return form. Our base case return is 9% inside the OZ wrapper a regular way taxable investment in farmland would need to achieve a 13.8% annual pre-tax return on a long-term capital gain taxed at 23.8% to achieve the same after-tax result. If you were to roll a short-term capital gain taxed at 40.8% into a QOF, 
the tax equivalent spread jumps from 4.8% to 6.8%, or the requirement of a 15.8% tax equivalent return to match the OZ. All right, this slide is a bit of a thought experiment on how OZ farmland investing might be part of a masterpiece family estate plan. Uh, this hypothetical is especially relevant if you're concerned about confiscatory estate and capital gains taxes as our mythical farmer Bruce is. Instead of waiting to die and risk his estate plan on government non-action on the basis, basis step-up provision, Farmer Bruce has taken matters into his own hands. Bruce structures a long-term sale leaseback of his farm with an institutional farmland owner. Bruce then takes his capital gain on the sale of the farm and rolls it into a farmland OZ while retaining his cost basis for farming operations. Bruce has changed the structure of his farming business, yet maintained an active role on the same soil he's cultivated for decades. He's invested most of his hard-earned capital from the farm into a diversified portfolio in the most tax-efficient manner. In the farmland OZ, he'll defer his long-term capital gain tax until 2026 while leasing the farm until 2027 with a five-year lease extension option. Bruce can continue his calling content that any capital appreciation on the 10-year hold within the farmland OZ will not be subject to capital gains tax. There we go. Uh, this chart summarizes the scale and broad capabilities of our farm manager, farmland partners. Partnering with FPI gave us immediate scalability and institutional credibility. FPI provides a full suite of property management services from sourcing and originating OZ farmland, actively managing farmer-tenant relationships, and developing and overseeing our improvement plans. Promised Land is looking to conduct a pilot impl implementation of leading harvest farm sustainability principles. We believe leading harvest principles are natu naturally aligned with Promised Land OZ's community impact focus. It's our intention to conduct the pilot on our 4,000 acre North Carolina farm. Our farmer tenant is an exceptional progressive farmer operator and leader in land stewardship. Our OZ improvement for this farm includes extensive land leveling, and drainage ditch refurbishment in collaboration with the local NRCS office and CAMA personnel, which is Coastal Area Management Act. There are considerable opportunities for wetland conservation and farmland preservation on this property. Uh, earlier in the presentation, I mentioned the natural capital concept, which I believe creates option value for farmland. On our North Carolina pilot, we foresee natural capital ecosystem services as working hand in glove with promised lands required OZ improvement plans and leading harvest ESG principles. Our land leveling and drainage system improvements will protect against soil erosion and flood risk. Our wetland preservation and forestry management plans will provide natural habitats for wildlife. Our farmland 
preservation plans will safeguard open spaces for recreation and well-being and reserve plenty of acres for carbon. To wrap up, here's a quick overview of this investment opportunity and our purported, ugh, portfolio return targets for our OZ farmland initiative. Lastly, if you have any questions or would like to discuss our program further, here's our contact information. You can also reach out to our colleagues at Farmland Partners. And as Ailey mentioned, uh, this presentation is available within the Expo app, within sponsors, Find Promised Land, and you'll find the one pager as well as the, the full presentation. And with that, we'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Uh, Mississippi and Illinois. Uh, we've looked more broadly. We'd probably follow farmland partners and, and their map where they're, they have farm managers. They have five regional managers. So we try to stick close to where they have a presence. Gentleman from Omaha. And with your scenario where you uh, have uh, maybe you have a farm family acres, you know, maybe you have a farm family that maybe doesn't have family to take over the farm and then you want to look at selling to an institutional investor. You're talking about reinvesting in those old homes. Um, uh, what uh, and have a five year extension, what sort of cash flow would you anticipate that farmer being able to recognize, you know, for 10 years, say. Off, off of the, the old farmland OZ investment? Yeah. Yeah. You spread it all, you know, have, have you it all out? The, uh, the current 10 farm portfolio, which is all that we've modeled, uh, this first full year, we bought uh, nine other farms in March in the North Carolina property in, in August. Uh, we're projecting that the, it'll yield after costs of three three percent, so to the extent that's ordinary income, we can distribute that. Yeah. Yep. On the ten farms, that's all. That's all row crop. Yeah. We, we to date we haven't done any permanent crops. So, uh, fruits and nuts. We've lo looked at it, but uh, there's a little bit more risk. Uh, specialty nature of the the produce, higher dollar value, and then uh, it's. Collect the check. Yep. And do. Uh, Fulfill their other dreams. Yep. It does. The short answer: It doesn't apply to farmland that's unimproved. If there's an improvement on farmland, like uh, grain grain storage for irrigation equipment, the substantial improvement applies. But if it's just land, it's, you have to improve it by more than an insubstantial amount. And we've spent... That, that's right. So the example, uh, when we had the 10 farm portfolio, total value was 54 million. 47 was purchase price and 7 million of planned improvements. Yes. Yes. If it's just raw, raw land that's just farmed, like uh, for, I think, three out of four Illinois properties, we put, there was nothing on there. We put drainage tile in, and we meet the, the requirements. And we spent a lot of money with the tax advisor, big four tax advisor, 
um, and lawyers to make sure that what the guardrails were and what the IRS meant when they gave this more than an insubstantial amount in the, the regulations. Thank you. Yeah, great question. So when we started this journey, I spent some time looking at multifamily and other OZs, mostly in urban. Then COVID hit and we figured uh, that people need to eat. So we looked at farmland and found how it applied. I don't, I'm not a farmer. I'm not gonna pretend to be a farmer. So we reached out to farmland partners. Paul Pittman is a University of Illinois grad like myself. We, pitched him on the idea of a joint venture, and we bought nine of the 10 farms from farmland partners. They have, so the 20% I quoted uh, for OZs, inside, and, uh, inside OZs versus total, that was based on the sample for farmland partners. They had 30,000 of their 150,000 acres were in OZs. Of that 30,000, some of them are already improved because Farmland Partners is professional manager. So we got down to 11 farms and we bought nine of the 11. Thank you. Okay, Ailey, Ethan, did I forget anything? Oh, sorry. Um, with, with emerging farmers, it comes, comes risk. And so today, we're working with established farmer operators. As we scale the business, we're, we're looking to cultivate relationships with minority and emerging farmers. All right. Ailey, Ethan, did I forget anything? Oh, Ethan, yeah, Ethan wants, if, you, if you're willing, Ethan will collect your contact information and we can. Oh. Uh, the, the, if you're saying ta someone takes non-taxable gain money and puts it in the opportunity zone, they would, they would just pay tax on the capital, capital gains. Yeah, it's the 9% less the capital gains tax they're going to pay on the 10 year, 10 year hold. So, uh, you know, 20, 20%, 23.8% tax on the 10 year capital gain. So it's, uh, it's that 15 million out of the 
Well, I guess it's the whole 20 million out of the, my example on the 34 million of equity. That's how much their return will erode. So hypothetically, it's the 4.8% the spread on a long-term capital gain. So the nine becomes half that. Terrific, thank you for uh, attending.